Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to another Top 8 Tactics video. Today's video will be talking, uh, mainly covering over uh, the new item drop meta, I guess, in 9.18. And so the thing about this new meta is the fact that right now, uh, the game isn't about building perfect comps. You can win with a lot of different comps, replaced quite well with a lot of different comps, because right now, you're given so much so many champions and so much gold early that people tend to develop their comps very quickly. And so by round like stage three, what ends up happening is people are, are, are gonna have two star three cost units, something that really didn't happen that consistently until like maybe the end of stage three. And so what ends up happening is everyone's taking more damage, everyone has more gold. Um, you need to make sure your comp is fully functional around level six to seven, right? As opposed to being able to consistently get like a perfect level eight composition like you could before. Uh, today's video will be talking a little bit about uh, what happens when you have the items for one comp and you don't hit it. And so uh, I, this this video will begin with me trying to go gunslingers. Eventually, I end up having to go four knights. And then from there, uh, you'll kind of see where I end up going. So recently, I've been trying to go, um, I've been trying to go like chain vest, pirate, uh, cloak openers. I think they're, they're pretty interesting. I like going gunslingers. Um, and large rod in general, pretty good item. Builds into Morellos, builds into Rage Blade. Two pretty good items, and I got Zed unfortunately, which I thought. Wait, what the heck? Ah, I missed it. Okay, so I got Zed. I got Tier. The thing about Tier is you, uh, it's used to build a lot of like early game carry items. So when you have stuff like Shiv, you have stuff like Ludens, uh, things that are really really strong early game and tend to peter off kind of more late game. Uh, we found a giant spell really bad. Generally speaking, redemption isn't really what you want early. Um, you want like a carry item like, you know, Ludens or something to be able to go crazy with. Uh, Ludens and Shiv. So here we end up just taking out the two Scots unit. Remember, if you need to sell, that's okay. And you really want to be in a position where you can sell. I'm like lowering the volume a little bit. You want to be in a position where you can sell um, because what ends up happening is. Uh, if I don't get any gold or any units here, I just get items I need to sell to buy the other graves, at the very least. Already, uh, with tier openers, I, I tend to be like, okay, you know, gunslingers are pretty interesting. Uh, belt, uh, giant's belts can also turn into red buff, and so, uh, I'm just kind of trying to figure out where I want to go right now, and getting three slingers on the first shot. Pretty cool. And I got hush components. Hush being mandatory for, uh, whatchamacallit, gunslingers to be able to, to play them, especially in the late game. And we have four slingers already. And so I'm kind of thinking we have Hush, we have slingers. Generally speaking, a very common uh, gunslinger comp is six blade masters, uh, four gunslingers with Lucian carry. And you give them Hush, you give them blade master, and you're good to go. Like that's the in game comp. You can give him this arm to deal with assassins. You can give him uh, Giant's Claw to be tankier. You can give him like Rage Blade. You can give him. Uh, uh, shrink, like you can give them a lot of different things, but generally speaking, Hush and Blade Master are the two necessary items to run for Gunslinger compositions, late game Blade Master Gunslinger compositions. Uh, and so already I'm thinking about that right now. Like I have the Hush, and we have Hush and Red Buff. So we have two great on hit items, and I want to just force Gunslingers right away. I find the two graves, and I think to myself, this is it, you know, we're good to go. So if you're curious what happened here, uh, recently on this patch, uh, I don't really like hyper rolling gunslingers anymore. I feel like it's really all in ish. Uh, and I prefer to tend to go look to build econ, go to six and try to get, uh, Lucians to carry. Um, but in this, in this scenario, I decide to just push levels. I find on this current, uh, game, the uh, current situation in the game that like, if you get four items, that means you don't get much gold. So you should try to push wins. Win and win streak if you can. A lot of people in a lot of compositions right now will be sandbagging like nonstop. You have Void Assassins looking to tank, any anyone who opens pirates looking to tank. And so um you should take advantage of that and try to deal as much damage to those players as you can. Uh leveling early allows me to get a higher chance of hitting game plank, uh hitting any Lucian as well. And so I'm pretty happy about that. In the meantime, we'll pick up some knights. They're not very good, but at least that you can kind of work uh no you can maybe go a noble transition back in the mid game if you find a Lucian and it's potentially something you can work with uh, as frontline. You can always put in two knights early as just a small mini mini thing. So right here we just put in two knights 
two gunslingers, two knights, really, really common such a scenario. I'm going to sideline my graves because I like the arcs that he makes on the sideline as opposed to the middle. Sometimes if he doesn't proc gunslinger, he doesn't get good angles on his stuff. Uh, I'm trying to find a position with Trist where she won't die to assassins. Um, and so I just decided to hump uh, up a little bit with Trist. But generally speaking, Trist is four hex range. Longest range of the game, so you can t you can kind of put her over here if you want. If you're not worried about assassins in this situation, my Garen is like assassin bait. I want Trist to live as long as possible because you know, hey, Trist, she does a good job at hushing everyone, and hushing is, dude, hush is like an incredibly powerful tool for gunslingers or for anyone. Hush is a great late game item, and for gunslingers, especially because they can apply it to multiple people, like on hit items, just phenomenal. We win this round. Remember, we're win streaking with um, Gunslingers right now. We're just looking for Lucian. Like, right now, I, I don't care. Looking for Pirates, looking for Lucian. Uh, we won't... The thing about this is we won't put in Pirates, like, at all. There's no way we're going to put in Pirates uh, immediately. What would happen uh, in this situation is um, you want to have the strongest sport possible if you're win streaking. You'll put Pirates back in when you start losing. Uh, that's something you have to keep in mind because Pirates uh, give you, on average, 1.7 gold. But, uh, and winning gives you one gold, but you also get more HP. And win streaking can up past uh, three games, gives you two gold. And so right now we're at two gold right now. And I think if you're win streaking both the earlier rounds, uh, I almost want to say if you have something important to put in, uh, double leveling here is very, very nice. Uh, you can either double level or look to econ. It's up to you. But if you're, if you're maintaining a win streak, I think double leveling good to go so like let's say i had something to put in to, to create two knights or or some sort of synergy i think it would be okay to do that staying at lower lower cost allows you to roll one cost a little bit better uh generally speaking though i actually think i misplayed here in hindsight i would have i should have just spammed straight to level five from this position because i think maintaining the win streak is worth so much um especially given like i would say my items uh i do on this situation want to hit I have some night outs. I want to hit the Trist. Uh, so staying lower level is certainly not a bad idea. But uh, I think, like, again, your win streaking, you should put the pressure on people. Um, and I, especially because I still need to find a Lucian game plank, right? Um, so we've end up, we end up having two completed items. Next thing we're going to get is Recurve plus Blade Master because uh, Spatula, because like I said before, like Blade Master Spatula is necessary. The problem with this situation is, like, I'm last pick. So I don't really get my... Picking the litter. You see, I'm already mousing over the two recurves because those are the things that I want. Additionally, um, disarm is okay. I think cloak in any situation with gunslingers is good because what ends up happening is cloak can build into every on hit item in the game. Um, and so, like getting another hush even isn't even a bad thing. But I got, I, got, I was very fortunate here to be able to find the uh, recurve at the very tail end. Uh, kind of a rare situation that won't happen that much. Uh, so one of the good things about staying level four was I actually did hit my. My Mordekaiser out here, which is nice. And unfortunately, I, I the bow is on the pike, which I want, but I can't really keep. Right now, I'm scouting to see what people are going. That guy has two Rengars. And if I need a level here, which, to be honest, I think I do. And, okay, so it's way better in this situation for you to put in the pike. But I, I literally looked at this guy to see the guy I was potentially going to have to fight against. But in this situation, I wanted to... Sell the pike so I can hit econ over here while still keeping the like, potential for getting like two putting in two graves or having a like, graves out. Um, I, I think there is a good chance I actually win this with the pike in, but uh, yeah, it didn't like work out the way that I thought, expected. Also, in this situation, I should have definitely put the recurve on the Tristan, I would have wanted the recurve. And I ended up losing by literally one auto attack. Because I already know, like, uh, Trist right now is kind of holding items for, for myself. And right here... Okay, so first of all, last round, I should have put uh, the bow on the hush to get more hush procs, all that stuff. And we sell Trist when we find Lucian. Trist doesn't make the four gunslinger comp. The four gunslingers, generally speaking, are uh, any of the other five. Uh, with Lucian 2 being the main carry. The biggest thing right now is, is I stay just two, like... From stage 2 all the way from 2-1 to 2-5. If you ever see a poppy and you're holding knights, four knights, phenomenal transition. Super fucking good transition. To the point where I just put in four knights with graves too. Because it's just that powerful. 
Uh, it blocks 35 damage right now, and 35 damage at this point in time is like blocking pretty much everything. Um, it's blocking like half of their general auto damage, so they take forever to be able to kill your units. Um, but I'm still trying to go Gunslingers. Like I have all the items for Gunslingers. I really want to go Gunslingers. I'm looking for Lucian. I'm looking for Gameplank. I'm looking for Pike. I'm looking for Trist. Um, generally speaking, how you play Gunslingers is you you quick level to six, and you get Pirates, and you find Lucian two, and you roll all the way down aggressively for Lucian two with Pirates, and you just chill on it for a little bit. Unfortunately, I'm not finding much right now. Um, and I found one Lucian though, which is great. Um, I think in this scenario, by the way, holding on to Nar is really, 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 really powerful. Really, really powerful. Because it allows you to transition into some sort of like three Yordle based frontline. And Nar premier unit right now is probably used in almost every important comp in the game outside of Rangers. So there's something to keep in mind, for sure. Um, so right here, we end up actually finding a Spatula plus Recurve. So I get like legit the nuts actually straight the nuts here for blade master and i'm fucking loving it you know it's we go ahead and level here we have the gunslinger uh thing to put in we are just killing it you know we have uh and i'm, I'm okay I, I don't mind putting the recurve on we find the garen upgrade and we're in a great spot. The, the thing you want to do when you're at stage 3 and stage 4, you really want to know when you need to stop rolling to be uh, to be able to, you know, save up Econ to go into the next stage. So right now at the Fortnite plus a couple upgrade situation, like, I'm, I'm sitting in a really, 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 really nice spot. I don't really need to do anything. We're pretty much guaranteed going into 4-1 we're going to be... We're winning, we'll lose like maybe like 10, 20 health overall, depending on how strong people are. But we have a very powerful comp that we don't really need to do much. That's actually the first place player, by the way. So very fairly straightforward. In this situation, I think since I'm not gonna go Trist, right? We had, we had six gold, we bought the show, we have two left over. If I just sold Aatrox and Trist, probably would have been fine. Um, I could even sell graves because honestly holding graves when you're going when you're pushing levels is really kind of disrespectful. Um, but uh, you want to start holding blade masters because you want essentially the comp is to transition into blade masters. Uh, you you need six blades to make it work. You have one. Uh, usually your six blade masters are uh, Shen Aatrox, uh, Shen Aatrox, Fiora, Gameplank, your Gunslinger. And like Yasu or Draven. That's how that's a six that you end up going. Draven's actually a bait when you go six six blade master uh for gunslinger because all your items are on gunslingers and you need frontline, so Draven doesn't really work that well. Again, we put graves near, near the side here to try to get a better spread on people cutting in. And we have this one unit Darius over here to bait out and eat the assassin assassins that jump toward the back line here. Um but yeah, I'm in a great spot. Even if I lose a couple rounds here and there, it's no big deal for me. Um, right now, we just want to look toward finding six blades, uh, six blades, and I want to transition out of this knight comp pretty quickly because it's like I don't really think knights are fantastic, especially when you have a when you have the gunslinger items that I do. I really want to play like the best gunslinger comp, um, and it sucks because in this situation, like you see double a soul, and this a lot of times this kind of. Uh, Position you can look to transition if you have the items to go into things like um, uh, your knight sorcerers, two knight, four knight, yordle sorcerers, very common. Um, but I don't have the items because yordle sorcerers require like GA Morellas on Kennen. Uh, I don't. I don't have like really great uh, you know, spear or shojins or anything to to put onto a soul. So unfortunately, that's just a bait. Um, I think the one thing about uh, I have to say is when you have red buff and gunslingers, it's really good on graves early, but it gets progressively worse as the game uh, goes on. The thing what happens with frontline is frontline dies first, especially when rangers are so popular. So when you put red buff on graves, like it's not going to apply to that many people when you get the four slingers in the mid late game because he's going to get glacial stun, he's going to get like just like gnar ulti and die before he can apply as much. So I don't like putting red buff onto. Uh, uh, graves as much except for as a carry early game uh some a lot of times i just end up selling graves because uh 
I want, especially with four slingers, I want the red buff onto a backline, whether it's Jinx or whether it's uh, Lucian or whether it's Triss, uh, maybe even MF. Uh, I, I prefer that to anything else. Here we end up getting Cloak. Remember, Cloak ends up working with any Gunslinger item. So what ends up happening is if you have... Oh, this is Shrink. We have the uh, Recurve. And it, Shrink's okay. Honestly, it's not phenomenal. You could do better. But it's okay. Hush and this arm, I would say, are, are a little bit better. And we just hit this guy. And luckily, if you keep looking at our Graves arcs with Red Buff, we're doing a lot. We're, we're doing good. But look how quickly Graves dies here, right? So a lot of this fight is going to be down to like, well, can I silence and can I keep like the Lissandra or keep the backline silenced here? Unfortunately, wasn't able to do it in the losing our, our streak, but we're okay. We're at 30 gold. Like essentially what ends up happening is we're just pushing for potential gunslingers. And then, then we see the sedge here. And I have to really think to myself, like, am I going six nights? I've never done six night gunslingers and it sounds really bad, honestly. Uh, Graves doesn't scale very well. Triss is actually getting outscaled as we speak. Um, so what ends up happening is late game slingers, you only stack Lucian and you only stack Jinx. Um, and I haven't really found more than one Lucian and the en entire time, the entire game. Um, so I'm kind of worried where this comp's going to go, but I know at the very least with four knights, like we're cruising until stage four. Um, at worst, with this one la last round, we can lose like another 10 health. Uh... The big, the big counter for, I would say, uh, knight compositions is Void Assassins. They just completely can ignore uh, this, uh, the, the block in the sense that like they crit for 1,000. And you, when you block like 40 of that 1,000, it doesn't really matter. You're still dead. Um, and so I really dislike playing knight comps into Void Assassins. But everything else, like I want to play like Rangers. I want to play the Gunslingers. They, they do a lot like less damage so, so to speak so right now i'm in between comps right i want to go uh slinger blade masters found no lucians no jinxes and i'm i'm currently buying knights and i don't really want to buy knights but like i'm trying to figure out like do i sell the atroxes do i sell the graves like how do i hold on to this uh scenario and i think may, maybe going for like graves three and Trist three when i'm pushing levels um is definitely too greedy like i think selling out of uh, the Trist and the Graves is completely okay right now. And I'm hovering at Darius because the entire time I'm thinking to myself, do I sell this unit? Like, am I ever going to go six knights? Luckily, I found some gold to compensate. And we have a knight spatula. So immediately from this position and an eight shocks, I think about we're going six knights for sure. And we start rolling down here to try to find Jinxes. We're looking for Dravens. We're looking for like uh, any Gunslingers, Lucians, especially. We're de we're desperate for Lucian right now. Like, um, and so Gunslingers aren't great unless you can get four of them for the most part, because uh, especially when you're playing on hits, it's not ideal. And right here, I make a pretty fatal mistake in the sense that I forgot I only have. I don't have enough room at level 7 to fit 6 knights in with anything else. I've only fit 5 knights in, which is obviously really silly, right? I should definitely try to get 6 knights in. Um, so I kind of made a big boo-boo right there. I'm um, Something that I'm sure to correct next time. And I'm kind of just fortunate enough that we end up uh, winning this. Um, but yeah, Hurricane doesn't do much damage. Like at, Rangers with uh, all this... Like, all their, like, damage... They're very uh, small amounts of damage over a large, a large amount of time. Like, uh, or I wouldn't say that much. Oh, should we ha we hit the Sedge 2 here? And we hit the other Lucian. We're, we're, we're chilling. But, like, I really like Six Knights into Rangers because they do small amounts of damage. And that's the number one thing. Like, they do not do much damage at all. Um, and you can block the majority of damage. And on here, I'm, like, trying to figure out because Triss is getting outscaled, at the, like, as we speak. Do I put the items on Kindred? Like, what is going on in my head to, like, try to make this work? How do you run a Six Knight composition? Well, from personal experience, I played a lot of Six Knights in the last couple of days. And in hindsight, uh, I know that you can go three Blade Masters with, with uh, a Blade Master or a Knight Spat. You can go uh, Dragons. Uh, a Soul is pretty good. You can also go uh, stuff like uh, Jinx, Blade Master. And that's kind of what I'm looking for. 
is because we have the on hit items they're not they're really bad like these items you cannot put on draven uh i think that right now we're just looking for jinxes to try to shift over to like kind of a more uh on hit blade master while still being able to run like yasso atrox and the third the third bm at level eight that's like kind of the dream um whether i can achieve that that's to be seen oh and when you're running um that kind of situation you can't keep the atrox because if you're running jinx you need to have gp because it is a blade master plus a gunslinger and so if you're limited on space which i am at level eight and a lot of times other comps like nobles are you're you have to just uh run gp instead of anything else unfortunately i'm still keeping kindred i don't even know what to where to put the red buff like i'm thinking to myself like the red buff should go on a gunslinger like what gunslinger does it go on what is kind of going on um maybe i put it on the mordekaiser i just end up selling him later uh once i find the kale but like how consistently can i get the kale um i have a six nine composition that i feel like isn't very good right now and i'm at a position where like i'm probably gonna get out of scale pretty soon unless i can stabilize kind of a consistent backline something that does more damage than tris you know tris is not really cutting it she's doing like 12 damage honestly we end up losing that, it's not a big deal. And we're going here and we have a kind of, we have all the items we want, to be honest. We just need the units. Like ideally, um, I take either Spat or Jinx here. Uh, but because I'm first place, I don't really get the luxury of choice. MF is not bad either. But what sucks about taking Jinx is actually that, um, yeah, I don't get the item. I don't get an item slot. And so I'm really kind of torn in between the two because MF is possible to put on, put on in for sure. But I think even for MF, it's really, really difficult because again, I don't think I can get three Blade Masters with MF going in. And right now at this position, when I have the six Knights and like the Aatrox 2, yada yada, oh, um, I'm just looking to save gold to try to push eight at 5-1. Uh, either pushing eight at 5-1 or pushing eight right now would be fine. Um, generally speaking, I'm looking for game plank. I'm looking for Jinx too, um, and I think that the the more I roll on eight, the better it is for me. I'm probably going to be slow leveling, which means keeping fifty gold and leveling from there. Uh, in this position, a lot of times um, people are going to ask me like, what what kind of position do you do in general for this kind of situation? Well, I have um, uh, assassin baits on the, on the on the left and right. So the, you put generally speaking your weakest knight in the bottom left and bottom right corners. If you have one carry in the middle. And then you put the carry in the middle. And what happens is generally this is just a very standard safe spread out situation. You have your front line. You have these things which will end up eating any assassin jumpers. Because any assassin's position anywhere will always jump toward the corners first before they come in toward the middle. And so these are essentially baits. Uh, baits. And if I'm not against assassins, they take like two seconds to walk up. Which is something that I am willing to take. You know, as uh, a kind of a convenience fee for me not immediately exploding when I play against an assassin player. Which, but this guy actually has an insane uh, strategy with uh, Sedge. I actually like it a lot. Where he goes Demon uh, Rapid Fire. He ends up shooting out so many Sedge, sedge ultis that I'm like kind of interested. I kind of want to try that in the future. Unfortunately, it's just a Sedge... Uh, oh, God. It's a Sedge... Uh, whatchamacallit? One? If it was a Sedge 2, I'd definitely be losing. So yeah, like Triss is not doing Triss is definitely not cutting. The thing is about Gunslingers, you don't want to put in a Jinx one. Jinx one is just as bad. Um, and I'm still thinking like maybe I go Triss three, but to be honest, it's kind of a long shot. Um, I think holding on to Pantheon wouldn't have been a bad situation here, but we don't really have the items to go dragon shapeshifters. Like if we wanted to go dragon shapeshifters, we would want like Ionic Sparks or like AP Morello items. Um, which just so, uh, sorry, not dragon ship sisters, just dragon. So Pantheon or Shivana plus a soul, uh, is a six, nine variant, which allows you to be like magic. Your it allows you to be magic immune while blocking like 80 damage, which is in insane. Really, really strong against uh, other, other players. Uh, one of the things I should be doing right now is especially going into stage four, one and five, one, I should be looking around to see who has my jinxes. This guy has two jinxes. So, so there's only 13. And I really need to find the jinxes they're super important for me uh to be able to even play the game with my current items um right now because i'm only looking for a four cost uh, jinx i'm just holding every four cost unit i can because i'm trying to take four costs out of the pool so i can have an easier chance of finding jinx no one else on the board is going to want jinx but me i really need this jinx 
uh, to be able to kind of make my comp work. I'm starting to take like, you know, increasing amounts of damage here and there by losing the rounds. Right, right now, I don't really need any more items. Like I've pretty much hit every item that I want in this comp. And so we're, anything that we find is just like extra icing on the cake. If I was against assassins, I'd love another uh, this. I'd love this arm. If I'm against uh, anything else, I just two another hush is great. So right now we're just rolling for jinxes, and right here I sell the jinx because I don't want jinx to have bad items. We we got the Yasuo, which is great. And the perfect blade master, three blade masters with six units is you blade. Ma you have one blade master. You have a Yasuo, which is an incredible unit, just disgustingly good. And then you have a Jinx, or you have uh, your range DPS one. So I have almost a perfect three. I need GP here to really make, put it in the Jinx. But I don't want to put in the Jinx till I find um, uh, Jinx three. Kind of fortunate here. We end up selling everything, and next round we're going to go in. And the thing is, Yasuo is a great holder of on-hit items. So he, anything that you, you have in terms of like on-hits can work exceptionally well with Yasuo, just as well as with Gunslinger. Because every one of his casts, his sword casts, and his tornado can proc on-hits. He's great with red buff, especially because he doubles the amount of health as effective defensive stats. Um, and so... In a perfect scenario, it's in Nobles as well as Six Knights. Yasuo is like a, just a, a random Yasuo too. Incredible unit. Super, super good. Oh, um, Six Knights. Honestly, some of the best items for Six Knights it would be Ionic Spark. I don't really have great Six Knight items. Okay, we end up throwing this away. We end up throwing this away. We go in from this. And I, I had to think to myself while we're, while we're doing this. Do I want to put Shrink or anything else on the Yasuo? That's something to keep in mind. Because again, he can apply on hits as well, but I decided to just stack my Jinx. And now I'm wondering who gets a Knight's Vow. Is it, do I want to look for better items for Yasuo or not? Because I'm doing really well in first place right now. So I really want, I'm in a position where I really want to be uh, putting in, in my opinion, certain I want to try to be making the best items on the best units. So I don't even build the Zephyr here. But you have to you have to know, as soon as you're putting items at 5-1, or you have to know that you're not going to get any components till six, stage 6, 6-4. Six uh, because what happens is, at, stage, at this stage, you get a full completed item. It's only completed items on stage 5. It's a fully completed item on this uh, dragon round. And then you get individual items on 6-4. So... Is the game going to last to 6-4? And do you want to wait that long? Usually you don't. So I would just make this effort here. Whether or not you put it on Yasuo, that's kind of up to the debate. But he can use the extra 200 health really, really well. But uh, right now, I make the big mistake of not just committing to Zephyr. Because it, Zephyr is like a usable item. I can definitely see it being used. And so we end up Zephyring the, the Darius here. And, and this is... Just to be able to get a little bit of, of extra power on the board. We kind of completed our in-game comp. Um, unfortunately, like, <laughs> we're really not doing that hot on some, against some of these compositions. And some of the times when you play this composition, it's going to be going pretty slow, honestly. Jinx right now isn't great in the meta, especially when a lot other people are going dragons. Because her ulti is, uh, her ulti does magic damage. Um, the only thing that helps in that regard, especially against shapeshifters, is the fact that I have shrink. So I can kind of shrink them down to where, like, your base stats aren't very good. And like I said before, right, just full item carousel. Uh, there's a lot of things that could work out really well here. We just, Remember, we decided not to stack the Yasuo. So what could work well here? Uh, Yasuo does really well with Tear, with, with Seraphs. It immediately uh, gives him, like, another ulti off the bat. Glacial is excellent. Um, Glacial gives him 400 health, which turns into 800, right? Because 400 health and 400 shield. And it synergizes with Sedge to put two Glacial on the board. Additionally, uh, you can also go Shrink on him as well. I think those are the three things I'm looking for. And definitely Glacial is, is the standout for me. But unfortunately, it's gone. I'm really greedy right here, okay? I'm super greedy because I'm first place. And I want to know, can I get a better item in the PV round in two rounds? And because I'm just like, you know what? If I lose the next two rounds, disastrously. Um... I could take, you know, max like 30 damage, maybe 40 damage. And regardless of what happens, I'm good. 
it is, it's at this point in time that you really want to be scouting other people. And luckily, I ended up hitting uh, Darius Zephyr on a unit that I did not expect to be there. But it worked out in my favor. Um, the biggest uh, th thing about this right now is I want to be looking around and making sure, like, essentially that my I get a good Zephyr target. And I'm looking to position uh, Jinx to make sure that she doesn't get immediately hit by, um, what should we call it? Uh, silly initiation stuff like Nar 2, stuff like um, Sedge 2. If they clump up right next to the middle, like Jinx is going to get hit. And so you want to make sure that that's not an open target for her. Right now, we're not in the late game position positioning stage. Usually you went down to the last four or five people. About now, it's when you, when you can think to yourself, okay, where do I want the Jinx? So I ended up putting my uh, Zephyr on the other side because I wanted to Hurricane uh, that, that unit, and I want to Hurricane the Ash, so it's kind of difficult to decide where to put the Zephyr. In this situation, because I'm already doing so well, I decide that I'm just going to go ahead and push levels and put in Guardian. Um, Guardian's not an ex that excellent, but it's okay. So we waited the entire time, and we found a Blade Master spat, which is kind of interesting. So from this position... Off the Blade Master spec, I don't know if I could do too much. I could, um, I put the Shrink on Yasuo because Blade Master spec can't even fail on Yasuo. I'm not gonna get the stage, uh, what should we call it, four, six four, and put one naked item on him. Shrink on Yasuo, perfectly fine item, and put we want to put the Blade Master on some one of the knights. The best knight to put it on probably Sedge, most impactful Sedge or Poppy. Um, and then I realized something. I actually did. A really bad job in the sense that like I positioned very poorly so in this situation I should spread out uh, a little bit better uh, probably put like the jinx toward the ter toward the edge uh, and then kind of bring in the other stuff closer what ends up happening is I actually lose this fight against dragon because none of my ultis get off because dragon just owns me because he gets 40% extra attack speed um, and I didn't think it'd be this close so I actually uh, I actually felt really bad about this. So we don't get it. It's it's okay. I actually hold uh, I hold this gen uh, assuming that maybe we can go drop down to like four knights maybe and then run six blade masters. Uh, but we end up leveling the nine to nine because uh, we don't have any any other upgrades except for Yasuo. So I was like, okay, there's no reason to roll. Right now, Karthus is the best thing to put in. Another Yasuo is also great as well. But um, I spent too long rolling, actually. I should really uh, be looking more at positioning. And in this last-minute case scenario, I was able to get the Zephyr swap to be able to hit the Ash, which is super, super good for us. Uh, and remember, like, look at how much damage Ash is even doing in this scenario. It's, like, relatively low, in my opinion, just because we're running six knights, so it's very difficult for Ash to be able to do a lot of damage with her Hurricane. If that was a Draven with Hurricane, it, it'd chunk. But, like... It's essentially hitting each of my units by like 10 to 20, which is not a lot. We're, right now, right here, we're just looking to find um, probably the Yasuo, Kale, Karthus, the last three, that's it. And we end up just rolling. Um, there is an argument that maybe we can put, put in Pantheon uh, over uh, Karthus here. If I need the, the Morello buff, like let's say I'm hitting a lot of shapeshifters and I'm not getting, and I don't have the red buff here, then Pantheon could have gone in for sure. Uh, right here, you're just looking for important units, powerful units put on, on the board. Swain 2 is fine, Yasuo 2 is great, Karthus 2 is great. You just put Karthus usually because you get a free phantom, and like being able to negate uh, a full life bar of some people, pretty good. Like right here, being able to kind of push the Swain down, having him not ulti before him, really, really solid. There's really not, not much to talk about. In this situation, we kind of figured out what, what we wanted with the composition with the Blade Master Spatula. I wasn't able, like, the on hit items aren't that effective if you don't have f at least four slingers. But I was I hit the six knights in at first, and I decided to just stick with it. Right now, in the current meta, like, you just kind of play what you're given. I wasn't given any illusions this game at all. I wasn't able to find anything until the Jinx, too. Um, and I would say I had a very fortunate game, but I had a much different game plan going in, and my game plan ended up switching about two or three different times while I'm playing this composition. Um, I'm just looking 
I switched a lot of my unit positioning here. I'm looking if I can corner my uh, Jinx. Now, we, if you saw when I first ended up checking around here, let me show you what happens. I'm checking uh, for... for uh, I'm, I'm looking around. Okay, where are people putting their units? I can't hit that guy because I just hit him. It's unlikely I hit him again. I know it's possible, but for the most part, not happening. I, I'm worried about hitting one of the other two, and so I just end up cornering Jinx right here. Uh, to be honest, there was a high risk or somewhat risk of me running into the, the player with the Sedge over here. But because I want to get away from Sedge and Nar as much as humanly possible, um, to the point where that doesn't happen to me. If my Jinx get, gets brought in and DPS early, like I'm in trouble. And that's what you want to do. You just want to make sure you're actively watching uh, Frontline to make sure you don't get caught. And look at the damage I, I literally do. Do you see that? 1347. 13 damage from my rocket, my rocket upgrade onto Dragon's Claw. Which, by the way, get that nerf right, please. It's a fawn, it's definitely going to be gone. And so at, at, at stage six, remember, you have completed items and non completed items. So, like, I would obviously love the glacial the glacial spat, but I don't have room for it, and so we're just kind of looking for something. We just end up taking the full thorn mill. I mean, it's better than nothing, right? We found, end up finding a Yasuo too right before the situation, and right now we have a disgustingly OP comp. I'm pretty sure I'm guaranteed first place with comp with this composition, uh, especially with a Yasuo too. Yasuo too with Blade Master, that unit can pretty much carry by himself. Um, so in this position, what ends up happening is, is I'm trying to abuse a soul AI. Um, so I'm, I don't know who I'm going to hit in this situation. If I hit the a soul player, the thing that uh, a soul does is a soul targets the farthest away unit possible. I'm trying to Zephyr a soul and then having a soul ulti this way and leaving my, uh, my actual carry right down here. Uh, ASOL targeting only targets the farthest away unit. So ASOL uh, targets like brand ulti, targets the farthest away target. So we put something in the corner to kind of bait, a rage unit to bait the ASOL ulti. Um, when you're looking at uh, uh, NAR and MF, they end up ulting based on what they're auto attacking. So that, that should give you an example of like how to position against those two. Just a disgusting game, honestly. At this point, hands off the keyboard. Probably can win regardless of my positioning because Yasuo 2 is just crazy. They haven't even broken the shield. Like, when I play against Ranger players and I'm, like, this developed, they really can't do anything. I actually killed... I'm so strong, I, my ghost killed the other player I was able to get first this game. I think this game, it feels like it, there wasn't that much on the line, right? Because I'm at first place, I was first place the entire game. But I wanted to use this game as an example of like kind of w going in and you ha you having different expectations from what you get as items and what you get as a starting build to kind of something that ends up differently at the very end. So I kind of transitioned two different times based on what I got. And that's kind of what you need to do in the current meta because uh, you're, if you don't, like you won't be able to last taking the amount of damage that you can take right now. Anyways, thank you guys for watching. I'll see you guys later.